that travelers are usually attracted to the ease or convenience they get by just walking into an airport and checking in their heavy luggage, while those they consider light will be taken on board the aircraft. In contemporary times, laptops, tabs or other devices have proven to be suitable companions on international flights. Many passengers stay connected to current affairs or even continue their work using the electronic devices such as tablets or laptops. Just recently, the United States and United Kingdom placed an in-flight ban on devices bigger than a cell phone from flights coming in from 10 specific countries. The decision comes in the wake of new aviation threats. The aim is to deter perpetrators from further attacks. This is our focus on this week's edition of Aviation This Week. Welcome to the program. I'm Victoria Ido. Terror attacks against the aviation industry are not new. They began in the 1960s with a wave of Palestinian terrorism. However, it was the September 11, 2001 terror attacks on the United States World Trade Center that opened the world to the seriousness of aviation terrorism and its potential dangers. On October 31, 2015, a Russian Airbus crashed in the Sinai Peninsula, killing all 224 passengers on board. The force of the blast on the plane was equivalent to the one kilograms of TNT explosion. On February 3rd, 2016, a bomb blew out a passenger shortly after takeoff from an airport in Somalia. In March 2016, two suicide terrorists blew themselves up at the entrance of the International Airport Terminal in Brussels, killing at least 31 people and injuring several others. Another airport attack took place in June 2016 in Istanbul, Turkey. During this attack, three terrorists opened fire in the departure terminal, killing more than 40 people and injuring over 100. Perhaps with these incidents in mind, the US and UK governments recently placed an in-flight ban on consumer electronics bigger than a cell phone. The US ban applies to non-stop US bound flights from 10 international airports in Amman, Jordan, Kuwait, Cairo, Istanbul, Jeddah, Saudi Arabia, Casablanca, Morocco, Doha, Qatar, Dubai and Abu Dhabi in the United Arab Emirates. That's about 50 flights a day all on foreign airlines. Meanwhile, the British rules apply to flights from Turkey, Lebanon, Jordan, Egypt, Tunisia and Saudi Arabia. US officials say the measure was intended to thwart possible attacks on airliners with small explosive devices hidden in consumer electronics. The US order, which has gone into effect, will impact nine airlines in eight countries across 10 airports. Airlines affected include Royal Jordanian, Egypt Air, Turkish Airlines, Saudi Arabian Airlines, Kuwait Airways, Royal Air Morocco, Qatar Airways, Emirates and Etihad Airways. However, the president of the International Air Transport Association, IATA, Alexandra de Uniac, believes the British and US bans are not sustainable in the long term. For him, the current measures are not acceptable as a long-term solution to whatever threat they are trying to mitigate. He says even in the short term, it's difficult to understand their effectiveness and the commercial distortions they create are severe. An appeal has gone out to the concerned governments to work with the aviation industry to find a way to keep flying safe without separating passengers from their personal belongings especially electronics. Security experts believe the UK and the United States are most likely acting on intelligence report. Let's get more on this from our guest, cyberspace expert Ifai Oguchuku. The issue of terrorism actually is, is a global problem. And based on the intel, I think those countries that they actually look at looking at um, that's where Al-Qaeda basically operates from and all that and over the years 
I think Akeda has been looking for more ways, more innovative ways actually to infiltrate the commercial aviation industry and all that. So I think what has happened basically is the fact that they're looking for ways to actually plant bombs inside the battery compartment of laptops, um, the digital players and all that. So again, based on that, the US government, particularly the uh, Department of home, home, home Security, decided, okay, you know what? We need to put this in place. So it's a, it's a new procedure. Um, but again, it's going to be inconvenient to the flying public, really. Looking at that regulation in terms of threat, you know, trying to do the uh, threat analysis, okay, um, it's a lot easier to fight fire with, within the cabin rather than, rather than the luggage compartment, really. So again, it's neither here nor there, really, for me. Because um, in as much as the plan by the Al-Qaeda or any terrorist organization actually is to try and infiltrate the commercial aviation by using personal electronic devices, which is PEDs, by planting bombs in the battery compartments. Now, again, if you have the physical security checks, that should be enough actually to identify whether there's a bomb in a laptop or, and all that. That, that, should, that should suffice, really. But, well, you never know. Um, the, 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 the TSA has not come up publicly to tell, to tell the world why they choose to do that, really. There are two kinds of communication that happens in an aircraft. There's the cockpit communication, which is safety critical. There's the cabin communication, which is non-safety critical, okay? Now, the cabin basically where passengers stay, cockpit is where the pilots and the, the, the pilot basically stay. Now, the thing is, within the aviation environment, the cabin communication actually is, has to do with providing internet within that space, which is, does not interfere with what happens in the cockpit. We've got different frequencies, different channels, and I mean, it's actually the security done, partition security done and all of that. So there's, there's, there's nothing going to happen between both of them, interfering and all that. But in terms of interference of maybe VHF radio, for example, I mean, this is something that people, again, maybe terrorists, like, they deliberately want to do. I mean, you can, also, you can actually hijack.